Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about scanning for vulnerabilities using Nessus. So I'm back up inside of my tally. I have created a virtual install, if you will, or a Docker image of Nessus, and I currently have it up and running inside of my browser here. I am running it for the first time, so I will have this warning that there's a potential security risk. What it is, Firefox does not like the self-signed certificate that Nessus is using. So I'm just going to click on Advance, scroll on down, and I'm going to accept the risk and continue. And that's the last time you'll see that. All right, on this first page here, we're going to select Nessus Essentials. Nessus Essentials was formerly known as Nessus Home, and it allows you to scan your environment up to 16 IP addresses per scanner with the same high-speed in-depth assessments and agentless scanning convenience that Nessus subscribers enjoy. We're going to go ahead and click on Continue. Here you're going to fill out your information. You're going to register with Nessus so you can receive an activation code by email. Now, of course, if you have an activation code, you can go ahead and skip this step. I have an activation code, so I'm going to skip, and I'm just going to right-click here, and I'm going to paste. And that's the activation code that I received in the email from Nessus. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue. And now I'm going to create an easier account for my Nessus. Now, I keep everything real simple. So I'm going to use the same username. Now, I keep everything real simple. So I'm going to use the same username and password that I use to log on to my Kali installation. One username, one password. I'm going to go ahead and submit. And the setup is complete. Now it's going to start downloading plugins. Now this is going to take a while because there are a lot of signature scripts and plugins that Nessus has to download and there are many of them. So do not interrupt this process or you can go back inside the first lab on how to create a Docker installation of Nessus and uninstall it and then reinstall it again and then go through the same process. After this downloading of the plugins has completed, it will initialize the plugins. It doesn't take all that long if you've got a high-speed internet connection like I do. But if you've got one of those Hello Kitty internet connections, then you're going to be waiting for a while. But even if it looks like it's not working, it's working. Do not interrupt the install. Well, for me, that took about 25 minutes. To install and compile uh, those plugins. So once you get that done, I'll go ahead and close this out. We don't need that. It takes you over to the My Scans. Now you can go up here and you can just click where it says New Scan. Now the one that you want to select or the scan template that you want to select is the Advanced Scan. Give it a user friendly name. I'll just call this Test. Just give it a description. Again, Test. I'm going to save the scan to my scans. That's the folder. And then we're going to go ahead and scan a range of IP addresses. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and minimize this. And let's go ahead and bring up a terminal. So what you're going to want is your network IP. So to get that, I'm going to type in ifconfig. Now the IP that we don't want is the one that's assigned to Docker. We have to use the Ethernet Zero adapter for our Kali installation because that's the interface that's going to be facing the network. So here we see that I have an IP address of 10.0.2.8 and I'm using a 24-bit subnet mask. So my network is 10.0.2. That's my network. This last IP here is for my host. And when you have a 24-bit subnet mask, that means that you have a possibility of roughly 254 hosts. First one's no good, the last one's no good. That's the way it used to be. That's apparently not the case anymore. You can actually use 255. I don't use it. I take it up to 254, and that's it. So what we're going to use is just the network portion, which is the first three octets. So now let's bring back up our Nessus scan. And so I'm going to type in... 10.0.2, and I'm going to type in a 1. So I'm going to be scanning from 10.0.2.1, and 
and I'm just going to go ahead and scan the whole subnet just like that so now I've got that done and so what I'm telling Nessus is I want you to go ahead and scan my subnet starting at dot one and I want you to go all the way to 254 so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch this scan now the way I do that is I just go down here and I click on the save option and underneath that I have launch so I'm going to go ahead and launch now what am I scanning so in this case I launched a couple of extra virtual machines I have a Windows 7 machine that's on the network and I also have Metasploitable on the network so that's what we're going to be using as our targets for this scan go ahead and minimize that now as long as this little double arrow is spinning in a circle that means that the scan is running and if you would like to see what is going on you just double click it and it'll take you over and it'll show you what vulnerabilities it has found so far so you can see that there is a color chart that indicates to you exactly what vulnerabilities are critical which ones are high medium low and info and now it's going to scan my entire network and so far it has found these following devices or these active IP addresses on my network that it can scan so go ahead and let it continue and when it's done you'll have your vulnerabilities listed and you can then start going through them so how do I go through the vulnerabilities well you just go on over here and you just click on it just like that and it says the NFS exported share information disclosure RPC information again now we can click on this and we can get some more information you see over here we have the CVSS base score so this 10 means that this is highly likely to be exploited that's what it means okay the higher the number the easier it is to exploit that's what that means it says that my NFS shares could be mounted so that's going to be in my metasploitable so it's pretty easy to navigate you can go on back over to your vulnerabilities you can go on, and you could even go back one more level over to your host and now I have three criticals and again as I told you earlier you just click on these like so and you can go through here and you can find out all the information you want about the particular vulnerability so if I want to find the exploit that I can run against this critical vulnerability I'm just going to copy it like so and I'm just going to go bring up another terminal here and I'm going to use something like search exploit so I'm just going to type in search exploit followed by the exploit that I'm looking for I'll just go ahead and hit enter and it comes up and it tells me that yeah there is an exploit that's available and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this up inside of Metasploit or I can go look on the internet for the exploit that I can run against this target so I can do this with just about any exploit that I come up with even the non-critical ones so I can open up another terminal if I so desire I can just type in MSF console and we'll start up Metasploit and then we're going to look for that particular exploit up inside of Metasploit itself so again I can just do a search this time inside of Metasploit and I'm just going to search for that vulnerability and see if there's anything in here that I can use and there it is and so all I have to do is just copy this all the way down here like so then I just go to the Metasploit prompt and I just type in use and I'm going to copy and paste that selection that I just created and you'll notice that the exploit has been loaded now I can do a show options and that's going to show me what I have to configure back at our scan here we can kick it on back one level take a look at the vulnerabilities we have quite a few here again I can go back on over to my host and you'll see that I have some mediums here now when you're doing an actual scan you're always going to take the most critical first and then you're going to work your way down normally we would ignore the info results those are not going to be pertinent to what we're trying to do here which is find vulnerabilities so there's your crash course on how you use Nessus to perform a vulnerability scan once you have it installed as a Docker container.
So you got any questions, you got any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.